guys, Mr. Macaber here. This is part one of lesson 4.1. We're going to be taking a look at radian and degree measures, three objectives for this video. We're going to describe angles, we're going to use radian measures, and we're going to find coterminal angles. Trigonometry means that we're going to be studying the measurement of triangles and some different relationships that happen within those triangles dealing with the angles and the sides. Now we're going to focus on the angles first as we start to build what we know about trigonometry and eventually moving into some different trigonometric functions. So the definition of an angle is when we take a ray, so a line that extends out in one direction infinitely, and we rotate that ray around its endpoint. We are going to use Greek letters to name these angles. So I've got a couple examples down below there, alpha, beta, theta. We use those things just to distinguish these angles from our regular variables like x, y, w, z, whatever the case may be. As we're building these angles, there are two different sides to the angle. There's what's called the initial side, which would be the starting position of the ray. If you're taking a look at the picture that I've got here, the starting side or the initial side would be this ray that's running along the bottom. Then we're going to take that ray and as we rotate it up, that becomes the terminal side. So the ending position of the ray after we do the rotation. And the end point of those rays become the vertex or the point of the angle. We're mainly going to be dealing with angles in what's called standard position. So these angles are going to be located on a coordinate grid. The vertex of our angle is going to be located at the origin and the initial side of our angle is going to match up with the positive x-axis. So we're going to get a picture that looks something like this. So the initial side of our angle is right here on the positive x-axis, vertex is right at the origin, and then we're taking this ray and rotating it in either direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise, in order to build these angles. Depending on which way we go, either counterclockwise or clockwise, it's going to affect what kind of angles we have. If we go in a counterclockwise direction, we're going to end up with positive angles. However, if we move in a clockwise direction, that's going to give us some negative angles. There's two different ways to measure angles, and we're going to start off by taking a look at radian measures. In order to find the radian measure, we use this little formula right here where it says theta equals s divided by r. Now that s value stands for an arc length, so we're going to be taking a look at a circle that's intercepted by whatever angle it is that we're looking at r is going to be the radius of our circle and theta is going to be the central angle. So if we take a look at this picture, again, we've got that s value being the length of the arc intercepted by our angle, r is the radius of our circle, and theta is that central angle that we're taking a look at. Now we know in order to find the circumference of a circle, we would take 2 pi times that r radius. If we're looking at a central angle that corresponds to one full revolution making the entire circle, then the arc length is the exact same thing as the circumference. So that s value would equal 2 pi times r. Well that leads us into this idea of a unit circle. Now a unit circle is a circle with a radius of one unit. If we combine a couple of those formulas that we were looking at before with this r value of 1, well if we're looking at the arc length that's 2 pi times the radius, well in this case we're dealing with a radius of 1, so the arc length of this circle is just 2 pi. Well if we use that radian measure formula where it said theta equals s over r, we just said our s value was 2 pi. We already know the radius length is 1, so the radian measure of this one full revolution, this entire circle, is 2 pi radians. And we can use 2 pi radians for the full circle to help us build some more angles. If we're just looking at half a revolution, well, we would be taking that full 2 pi, dividing it by 2, so this half revolution would be a measure of pi radians. If we do a fourth of a revolution, so taking 2 pi, dividing it by 4, this would be pi over 2 radians. 1 sixth of a revolution would be 2 pi divided by 6. If we reduce that down, we get pi over 3 radians. Now as we start building what we know about these radian measures, we're going to tie it into things that we already know. So dealing with our four quadrants on the coordinate grid system, talking about angles in standard position, so initial side running along that positive x-axis. If an angle lands between 0 and pi over 2 radians, so it's landing somewhere in this first quadrant, we're going to consider those angles to be acute. If our angle lands somewhere between pi over 2 and pi radians, so over here in this second quadrant, we're going to consider those things obtuse. 
Now there's also this idea of coterminal angles, meaning that we have angles that have the same initial and terminal sides. So they start in the same place, they end in the same place, but they're not the same angles. Now you might be wondering to yourself, how can this happen? Well, one way it could happen is if we take this ray and rotate it in the positive counterclockwise direction, that gives us one angle to take a look at. But if we took our ray and rotated it in the negative clockwise direction, we started at the same place, we ended at the same place, but these two angles are completely different. There is another way to end up with angles that are coterminal. If we look at the angles 0 and 2 pi, those ones are coterminal. So starting on this positive x-axis, and for 0, we're just not going to go anywhere. We're going to stay in the same spot. For 2 pi, we're going to make that one full rotation and again land on that positive x-axis. So if we make that full rotation, we get coterminal angles. If we look at the angles pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6, pi over 6 is a small purple angle. 13 pi over 6 is this other angle where we added in that extra rotation. Again, those things are coterminal. We started in the same place, we ended in the same place, but since we added in that extra rotation, these two angles are completely different. So to find coterminal angles, we can either add or subtract any number of 2 pi rotations. So if we look specifically at that 2 pi over 6 angle, we could add 2 pi times n, where n just stands for any integer. So if we used an n value of 1, that would be one rotation. If we used an n value of 2, it'd be two rotations. If we used an n value of negative 3, it'd be three rotations, but in the clockwise direction, the negative direction. Any angle that we're going to take a look at has an infinite amount of coterminal angles. It all just depends on how many rotations we're making. Now we're going to take a look at finding some positive and negative coterminal angles, and we're going to sketch those things out on our grid. First example that we're going to take a look at is the angle 3 pi over 4 radians. Now, in order to draw this thing out, remember we know that this quarter rotation is pi over 2 radians, half a rotation is pi radians. Well, if we think about these as fractions, this would be like 1 pi, this would be like half pi, so 3 fourths pi would be somewhere right in the middle of those two. So here's our angle 3 pi over 4 radians, and we want coterminal angles. So we're either going to add or subtract that 2 pi rotation. Let's start by adding the 2 pi rotation. So we're just going one extra time around before we land at this 3 pi over 4 angle. Now in order to add these things together, we're going to need common denominators. So I'm going to put this over 4. Now the 2 pi is going to have to become 8 pi over 4 in order for things to match up. And now if we just add these together, we're going to get 11 pi over 4. So here's our 3 pi over 4 angle. To build 11 pi over 4, we're just going to go in extra rotation all the way around and then land at this same angle. If we want to head in the negative direction, we're going to take this 3 pi over 4 and we're going to subtract off 2 pi. But again, we need common denominator, so I'm going to put it over 4 and make it 8 pi over 4. Subtracting those, we get negative 5 pi over 4. So starting at this red initial side, this time we're heading in the negative direction until we hit that terminal side. Taking a look at our next example, we've got 15 pi over 7. Now in order to draw this one out, we have to remember that one full rotation would be 2 pi. Well, if we think about that in terms of a denominator of 7, that would be 14 pi over 7. So this angle is a little bit bigger than one full rotation. So if we've got our initial side on this x-axis, we're going to be making one full rotation and then going a little bit further to land on this 15 pi over 7 angle. Now to build a coterminal angle, one thing we could do is maybe just subtract off one of those 2 pi rotations. That's actually going to make it even easier to look at. So if we subtract off that 14 pi over 7, since that's the same thing as 2 pi, we get the angle pi over 7. So that would be this small angle in here if we just started at this red initial side and just went straight up and stopped there. Now to build a negative coterminal angle, I'm actually going to use this pi over 7 angle that we just found because it's still coterminal to 15 pi over 7. And I'm just going to subtract off another rotation, so another 14 pi over 7. We get negative 13 pi over 7. So that means if we started at this red initial side, went in the negative direction, 13 pi over 7 radians, we'd get that angle. 
That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.